One question I am often asked is how earthquakes and volcanoes work on a flat earth. The short answer is, however earthquakes and volcanoes work on an earth with curvature, they work exactly the same on an earth without curvature. No special explanation for these phenomena are necessary, because the theories that exist for their occurrences are irrelevant to the shape of the earth. Having said that, the prevailing theory for the cause of earthquakes actually makes more sense on a planar Earth than a spherical one. Plate tectonics theory holds that large, adjacent, grinding plates of land build up friction until one fault plane slips under the other, causing an earthquake. This could theoretically happen regardless of the shape of the Earth, but even the mainstream images and terminology employed from plate tectonics to fault planes all suggest the geology of a level plane and not a spherical ball. As for volcanoes, the globe model purports that the lava which erupts and is ejected from volcanoes comes from deep inside the magical magma Tootsie Roll center of their Tootsie Pop Earth. In reality, however, the longest and deepest drilling operation in history, the Russian Kola Superdeep, after 20 years and busting several drills, managed to bore only 8 miles down. So the entire ball earth model taught in schools, showing a crust, outer mantle, inner mantle, outer core, and inner core layers, where this molten magma supposedly rests, are all purely speculation, as we have never actually even penetrated through beyond the crust. What we do know is that Earth's matter gets denser and more pressurized, therefore more heated, the further down you go. At its greatest depth of just under 8 miles, the Kola Superdeep borehole registered a blazing temperature of 356 degrees Fahrenheit. As you drill downwards, the temperature constantly increases approximately 1 degree Fahrenheit per 50 feet, so that after only 1.5 miles down, it is already the temperature of boiling water, and by the time you reached 15 miles down, all rocks would be melted down and molten. Professor Silliman, in the American Journal of Science, wrote that, In boring the artesian wells in Paris, the temperature increased at the rate of one degree for every fifty feet downwards, and reasoning from causes known to exist, the whole of the interior part of the earth, or at least a great part of it, is an ocean of melted rock, agitated by violent winds. The uppermost strata of the soil share in all the variations of temperature which depend upon the seasons, and this influence is exerted to a depth which, although it varies with the latitude, is never very great. Beyond this point, the temperature rises in proportion as we descend to greater depths, and it has been shown by numerous and often repeated experiments that the increase of temperature is on an average 1 degree Fahrenheit for about every 54.5 feet. Hence it results that, at a depth of about 12 miles from the surface, we shall be on the verge of an incandescent mass. In other words, molten magma does not originate several thousand miles below us in the core of a globe, but rather is a layer of our level earth starting just 12 to 15 miles down. This ever-boiling, slowly moving molten mass of matter and toxic gases finds and creates areas of least resistance which ultimately result in both earthquakes and volcanoes. The movement and stress causes shearing, folds, and fault planes, which, when violently resettling into place, we call earthquakes, and the nearby pressure release valves that spew out excess magma and noxious gases, we call volcanoes. This is why earthquakes and volcanoes are often active simultaneously, and why the vast majority of the world's volcanoes exist along major earthquake fault lines. In fact, the Pacific Ring of Fire alone is host to 90% of the world's recorded earthquakes and 75% of the world's active volcanoes. Professor Silliman continues, It is a fact well ascertained by scientific researches that the whole inside of the earth is one mass of fire, and what we call terra firma nothing more than a crust or rind by which that mass of fire is enclosed. It is certain that by the action of this fire, the earth's crust is perforated in many places with large conduits, which act as chimneys to the internal furnace. Of these chimneys, as many as 700 have been actually counted, and out of these, 300 are at this time in active operation, 
emitting not only smoke and vapor, but at intervals, masses of burning liquefied matter. Every volcano is a safety valve, ready to relieve the pressure from within when that pressure rises to a certain degree of intensity, or permanently serving for the escape of conflagration which, if not so provided with escape, might rend the habitable crust to pieces. And Dr. Samuel Robotham wrote, the volatile products of this internal fire being forcibly eliminated and occasionally accumulating and exploding have broken up the stratified formations and produced the irregular, confused condition which we now observe. Hence have arisen earthquakes, volcanoes, and other convulsions of nature. The products of volcanic action enable us to ascertain the character of the internal fire and what are the elements concerned in the combustion. Some of these products are of a poisonous character, and being thrown out in immense volumes from craters in various parts of the earth, are dispersed by the winds and diffused through the atmosphere, often in such proportions as to act as deadly poison on both animal and vegetable life. Thus it is certain from the phenomena connected with earthquakes, submarine and inland volcanoes, which exist in every part of the earth, from the frozen to the tropical regions, hot and boiling springs, fountains of mud and steam, lakes of burning sulfur and other substances, jets and blasts of combustible destructive gases, the choke and fire damps of our coal mines, that at only a few miles below the surface of the earth there exists an extensive region of combustion, a vast fiery gulf extending in all directions for thousands of miles, and the intensity and power of the chemical and electric action going on in this almost boundless subterranean furnace are utterly indescribable, and cannot be compared with anything within the range of human experience.